as a young woman, I know that I was asked often, when are you having kids? After I got married, even when I wasn't married, I was asked that question a lot. Does that land with you? Not everybody wants to have children, and that's okay. In this week's episode, we take a look at this societal pressure for women to have babies and the toll that it takes on their mental health and what we can do about it. Hi, I'm Adrian Irizarry. I'm an Eastern medicine practitioner who is passionate about women's health and helping women live their best lives. My goal is to put you in the driver's seat of your health, offering period solutions for a symptom-free life. Statements made in this program are for educational purposes only and not intended as a substitution for medical consultation or advice. We do not claim to diagnose, treat, or cure any diseases. This podcast is inclusive and welcomes all gender identities. The focus of the program is on biological function and we will use the term women throughout, but it is referencing physiological and social challenges for biology, not identity. Come as you are. I am happy you're here and welcome all performances of identity. I hope you find something helpful in this show. Welcome back to another episode of the Reproductive Rebel Podcast. I want to tackle a topic this week that is kind of a sensitive one. It's sensitive for a lot of reasons. And yet I think that it is really important to, and the whole reason behind why I started this program is to be able to pull back layers around some of these topics that we either just accept as normal or we talk about with our girlfriends and get frustrated about, but don't really feel like we can make any change around And in this week's episode, we're going to be talking about the pressure of having kids when you don't want them. And maybe, and I know as soon as I said that, there were probably a couple of you that went, oof, that's a big one. (laughs) That's the exact reason why I want to have this conversation, right? Because not everybody wants to have children for whatever reason right? Maybe it's because there is a health history that makes you fearful of going down that road. Maybe you have created a lifestyle and a rhythm for your life that you're really content with and children don't feel aligned to you. And yet we have this really crappy expectation in our culture that women are just supposed to want to have babies and we're expected to have babies. And don't get me started on, or maybe do get me started, because that is the point of this episode, about when you get married, the very first question you get asked is, are you planning to have kids? When are you planning to have kids? Right? So let's pull apart this cultural expectation a little bit. And really unpack what it means for people. Because one of the biggest challenges we have is around body autonomy. We want to be able to make choices for what feels aligned to us. It's a big part of why birth control came into the picture. People wanted to be able to control family size, to be able to get pregnant when they chose to, and prevent pregnancy when they didn't want to. A lot of that could have been handled with some body literacy education. I know that there are certain religious belief backgrounds, like the Catholic Church, for example, who does a really excellent job teaching people about fertility awareness and how their body works so that you can control your family size in a way that you don't end up using birth control as an intervention. But why do we have this expectation, right, that women are just called to mother? Now, there are some women who are called to mother. Don't get me wrong. They know from the time they become young adult women that they are really passionate about having kids. They want to have a family. 
sometimes there is even this understanding of I would rather do this than get a job. I would rather be a stay-at-home mom. There are people who are called in their life to do that. I had a client very early on in my practice that she wasn't married. She hadn't met the love of her life yet. And yet in some of our early conversations, she just knew she wanted to be a mom. She wanted to be a stay-at-home mom. She wanted to really focus on mothering as a part of her life's calling. And that's beautiful if that feels aligned to you. But there are a lot of women who feel very pressured by society, by family, by religion, whatever it is, they feel very pressured to have children. And that decision gets made from a larger meta level, like a societal level, rather than from an aligned place inside the body that says, yes, this is what I want right now. I had a client that got married recently, and I had a very similar experience myself when I got married, that as soon as they got married, they were already being asked about, are they going to have kids? In this particular woman's case, as I'm thinking about it, she got married and the day of her wedding, she was standing there in her wedding dress and having family ask, so when are you and your husband going to try to have kids? Have you thought about trying to start your family yet? And That kind of conversation is not productive, which is why I want to bring it up. (laughs) It's not productive and it's not productive for a lot of reasons. One, it steals the joy of the present moment. This woman was standing in her wedding dress. She had just spent the entire, I don't know how many months, planning for this day, making sure that the details were the way that she wanted them, navigating challenges with family members. And I'm sure as I'm laying this all out, there's probably a bunch of you nodding your head going, yep, I had a similar experience, right? Planning a wedding is not for the faint of heart for most of us. And she had just come to this, the penultimate moment, right? All of this planning was realized in that moment, and she was soaking in the beauty of it and enjoying the moment, and it's gone so quickly, months and months and months and months of planning and preparing and budgeting and making phone calls and all this stuff, right? And it's over in a matter of hours, and that moment got tarnished. And I'm not even demonizing the well-intentioned family member who asked that question, right? People don't ask that from a malicious place. They don't ask it from a not well-intentioned place. And yet, not allowing for that present moment to really happen stole some of the joy from that moment. It's no different than when a woman does have a baby. She's not even three months postpartum before somebody's asking her if she wants to have another baby. I feel guilty as a practitioner when I am actively working with somebody in the postpartum and I ask that question because I know that can be massively triggering for people. I have to ask it because from a clinical standpoint, I'm trying to see if they are one of those people who wants to have their babies really close together. And so there is a plan to start trying within a certain number of months, right? Because for some people, that's their plan. So I ask the question because I have to, but every time I go to ask it, I can feel this stress in my body because I don't want to put pressure on a situation that I already know is being met with societal pressure. I remember when I had my daughter, I don't even think I was three months postpartum when somebody asked if I was going to give them a sibling. And I'm thinking to myself, I'm still bleeding. (laughs) 
I am not sleeping. I am just getting into the routine of this nursing thing and figuring out this care of a little human being thing. And you're already asking me if I'm going to put myself through this process again. Are you kidding? And it wasn't that I didn't want to have any more children. It was just I wasn't ready to even think about it let alone answer that question in that moment. And so I think some of it, even these well-intentioned family members, God love them, they're so excited that they are already looking forward to that next exciting step in your journey, right? I don't think any of it comes from a bad place. I really don't. But We're so used to having everything be instant gratification that I think we lose sight of the present moment. And instead of just enjoying the moment for the moment, let the moment happen. Be fully present and engaged in that moment. And then move on to what that next potentially logical step might be. That's a much healthier way of looking at it, right? Enjoy the wedding day. Let them get through their honeymoon for Pete's sake before you even think about asking that question. Not to mention that question is very triggering for a lot of people because you don't know what their fertility journey has looked like. Maybe they were trying before they got married. You don't know. Maybe they've had losses. You don't know. Maybe they've made choices like one of the partners has had some sort of a sterilization procedure. They have no intention. And yet your question feels like pressure. For some people, they just know deep in their body that they're not being called to motherhood. That is okay. There is nothing wrong with not wanting to be a mom. Maybe that is energy that you're just not meant to embody in this life. Maybe you mother in other ways, caring for others. Maybe it's a pet, right? Maybe you're only supposed to be a dog mom. That's okay. You do not have to birth of your body in order to have something to love and care for think about the people who know that they want to adopt. Maybe there's a health reason why they don't want to go through the pregnancy process. Maybe there's a genetic reason and there are more concerns than there is peace of mind around going through the pregnancy process and so they choose not to. Whatever the reason, our culture puts this really awful expectation on women That you're somehow, quote unquote, less than if you choose not to have children or that you are self-centered in some way or that you're self-serving in some way. And all of that's bullshit. It's part of the reason why I wanted to do this episode because I've seen women come into my practice with broken hearts around pressure from family, pressure from friends about starting a family that they don't really feel aligned or called to. You should not have a baby out of obligation to somebody else. It's not fair to you. It's not fair to that child. It's not fair to that child's future. Body autonomy has become this really interesting conversation because we have things like birth control because we want to be able to control when and how. And yet, Culturally, our expectations from that meta narrative perspective is that women are supposed to mother, but we take it in a very literal sense that women are supposed to mother children rather than looking a whole bunch of ways. It could be birthing a practice, it could be birthing a business, it could be birthing a new way of life. It could be birthing a new version of yourself. The sky's the limit. You can birth all kinds of things into the world and it does not have to be 
something that has 10 fingers and 10 toes. So the whole idea here is I want to invite you to really think about why do we ask these kinds of questions? And why do we put this kind of pressure on procreation? We don't go running around for the most part. We don't go running around asking dudes this question or anybody who identifies as male. We don't go running around asking them when they're going to start their families. Sometimes you get moms who are excited about becoming grandparents that will ask their son or whatever that when are you going to have kids or are you going to have kids? But they don't bear the brunt of that pressure the way that women do. And that pressure isn't fair either because it also may not mean that somebody doesn't want to. Maybe they can't. As somebody who struggled with multiple miscarriages, I can tell you that from my perspective, that question used to really upset me a lot more when I was younger, but it used to really upset me because it wasn't that I wasn't trying. And I didn't want to start sobbing in front of a well-intentioned family member to tell them my whole big sad story about We've been trying and my body can't hold it because that storyline played in my head a lot. And I felt very subpar as a woman because I was struggling with my fertility and because I was struggling to carry a pregnancy. We were getting pregnant, but my body wouldn't hold the pregnancy. That made me feel inadequate. And then they don't know your story, but this well-intentioned, exuberant family member comes over and goes, when are you guys going to start having kids? That sigh is all I could muster for a while. And then I started getting better about answering the question and saying, if it's in the cards, it will happen. But even that felt like a cop out to me. When we create this unhealthy expectation that women are meant to have children and women are meant to mother, it really puts a lot of people in an uncomfortable position because for women who know that they want a mother, but maybe they haven't found the right partner, it puts pressure on them. It makes their experience with their biological clock very uncomfortable. Because they're hyper aware that they only have a finite period of time to do this in. Newlywed human beings should be able to just enjoy being newlywed human beings without feeling like they have to take this next logical step. I even remember having employers ask me when they knew I was engaged when I was going to have kids because they just assumed that was the next step. Now, It's a little questionable whether legally they could ask me that question, but I did get asked. And if I've experienced that, other people have experienced it too. That puts pressure on that relationship. That puts pressure on that person. If they didn't feel like it was something that was in the cards for them, for whatever reason, whether it's a physical reason, whether it's an emotional reason, whether they've just straight up decided that their body is their body, and if they want to become a parent, they're going to adopt. They're not even going to try the physical part of it because they don't have any interest in being pregnant. Like I said, there are so many ways to mother. You don't have to bear fruit from your body. If you're struggling to bear fruit from your body, that has a whole bunch of implications attached to it, right? When we ask these questions, it brings up a lot of stuff for people. You should be able to decide whether becoming a mother is in the cards for you or not without social pressure from an aligned place inside of your body. If you feel called to it, then step into it. And that doesn't always necessarily mean that you're stepping into it 
by way of a traditional, I'm birthing out of my body type pregnancy. And that should be your choice to make. No pressure from the outside, no pressure from culture at large. If we're really, truly going to push this conversation around body autonomy, right? And it's come up a lot post Roe versus Wade, right? Ever since that legislation was overturned, I feel that this question comes up more often than not, is making the decision that is the right for that person in that time. And access to birth control has become a pressure point, a pain point, because people want to be able to make that decision for themselves. And yet, how many of us have had that question as a newlywed person? When are you going to have kids? Or you've just had a child. Are you thinking about having another one? I saw this meme the other day, or maybe it was a little video, but it hit home, man. And that's part of where this episode is coming from. That and the experience of my clients, my own personal experience, right? I speak on this show from life. Things that you are all dealing with. And this particular social media post that I saw was all about if you have no kids, society is asking you, when you're going to have kids. You have one kid, somebody's asking you when you're having the next one. You have two kids, someone's asking you when you're having the next one. When you have three kids, somebody is scolding you for how many people you have. If you have a large family, the world is overpopulated. Why are you having such a big family? None of these things are anybody's business except your own. What you do with your body, what size you choose your family to be, who you decide to comprise your family of is your business and your business alone. I see so much stress in my practice from women who struggle and wrestle with this societal pressure around procreation. Whether they want to and they can't, they want to and they don't think that they're able to, they don't want to but are being pressured to, whatever it is, it causes a lot of unnecessary and undue stress. The moral of the story is the next time you see somebody who is somewhere in this continuum, I would invite you to really think before asking these types of questions. And I know that my tiny little show has a limited base of people who are listening to it, but whoever is listening to it, I really hope you share this with others. Whether you share the show or you just share the kernel of wisdom from this show, is that our reproductive sovereignty is a really hot button issue. And the only person who can make decisions around what feels aligned is the person whose body it is. It is up to the couple to decide if they've decided they want to have kids or not, how they want to have kids, what that's going to look like. That is up to them. Don't pressure them. I know you're excited to see where their lives go next. That's great. But how else could you support them and share that excitement with them? I'm excited to see where this next chapter leads you. What are your goals for this next chapter? Maybe you ask it that way. Now that you guys have gotten married, what are your goals now? What's next for you guys? Maybe they want to travel the whole world and they want to see all kinds of things. And then once they've done that, maybe they feel complete enough that they want to put roots down. Maybe they don't. 
maybe they want to continue being in different places in the world in different seasons of the year because they can. Don't steal their joy by asking them if they're going to have kids or not. Because I cannot tell you the number of clients that I've seen, friends that I've had, personal experience that I've had. The moment that question gets asked, are you going to have kids or are you going to have another kid? It totally steals their light and makes them feel subpar in some way. Even if it's not going to bring them to tears, at some level in the fabric of their body, you have just reinforced for them that they're not doing something right. And it is not fair, especially for those women who have decided that an aligned decision for them means they do not want to bring children into the world. There is nothing wrong with that. They are making an aligned decision for them. And that's not yours to understand. And that's not yours to remark or comment on. It's yours to hold space for. For the exact same reason that person may not understand why you decided to have seven kids. Right? You made that decision because that's what felt right to you. You decided that you wanted to have a family that size. So you did. That felt aligned to you. We all deserve to have our voices respected, our perspective respected. We don't always have to agree with someone else. We may not see it the way that they do. But we deserve to be able to express our truest responses to things. And if the authentic, real answer is, no, I don't want this, that's okay. You're going to be healthier. You're going to be happier if you're making that decision from an aligned place from something that speaks to you. Other people don't have to understand it. You are not having children for other people. It may feel like it because you might be getting pressure from an exuberant would-be grandparent, but you ultimately are the one that is raising that child. You want to do that from an aligned place because that's where healthy family dynamics come from. That's where healthy human beings come from. You want to become a parent because you want to. Not because you feel peer pressured or social pressured or family pressured into it. It is okay to not want to have children. It is okay. You don't have to. You do not come out of your mother's uterus with a contractual obligation to bring another life into the world. That's your decision alone. And it may also be situational. You may say, nope, I don't want to have kids. I don't want to have kids because somewhere in the fabric of your being, if you listen to episode 44 that I did with Taylor and we talked about this knowing that you have in your body and that things need to be right place, right time, right? Your body may subconsciously know that you're not in the right situation to bring life into the world. And so at that time, it feels aligned to you to not want children. You don't want them. Okay. A few years down the road, You may be in exactly the right place, right time, and you never in a million years thought that you were going to want to have children, and yet, now you find yourself desiring it. That is also okay. You can be the same person at different places on your journey and feel differently about it. 
Don't let people put pressure on you. We have this nasty little thread in our culture that if we don't apply pressure to something, we're doing it wrong. And the thing is, especially when it comes to how you use your fertility, you know in the core of your body whether something feels aligned to you or not, whether you want to do it or you don't. And yes, your ego brain tries to talk a really good game and sometimes that jerk wins. But you know what? You'll know when you're having an argument between your head telling you something is logical and your body going, hell no, get me the heck out of here. Because you're going to have that tightening. Your gut knowing that whole idea of, I just had a gut feeling, right? That is no joke. That gut feeling never, ever lies to you. Never lies to you. It always tells you the truth. Your ego brain, your mind will lie to you because it will try to think it's smarter than your body wisdom is. And it's bullshit. Your body is so much smarter. It has things figured out far before your brain ever catches up. You can see it in trauma. Your body protects you. Your brain catches up later. So trust your body wisdom. If right now it's a hell no, it doesn't mean later on it won't be a fuck yes. But maybe a hell no is always a hell no. And that's okay. Just make sure you're making that decision from your body wisdom. You really check in with this vessel that you live in and go, okay, girlfriend, do I want this or not? And if the answer is no, that's okay. There is nothing wrong with it. But we also have to get into the habit of really checking us ourselves before we ask other people those same questions. Because, I don't know, there's so many things that I feel fall into this category, up to and including when women are pregnant and people making comment about, oh, you should be having that baby anytime now. Look how big you are. That's horrible. And yet I've seen people do it. I experienced it myself. My daughter was due in September. And in June, people told me I looked like I was going to go any day. How do you think that made me feel? And I was healthy and active and I wasn't overweight when I was expecting. And yet I had those things in my experience. So there are times where I feel strongly based on collective experience that it would be wise to ask questions about people's goals and see if their answer also includes children. Rather than going right for that hot button, very sensitive issue. Because their goals might not include it now, but it might later on. Or it might right now and it doesn't later on. Or maybe it's not the right time right now. Whatever that is, don't put pressure on that person. It's not fair. We all deserve to have the kind of body autonomy that we desire. Doing things that feel in alignment with our body, that feel good in the circumstances that we're in, and nothing more. I hope there's something in this episode that lands for you and that resonates with you. And the biggest takeaway that I hope that you take from this is whatever your body is telling you is okay. Whether that's to have kids, whether that's not to have kids, it's okay. And as a society, we need to do a better job about not creating pressure around that topic for a long list of reasons. Because it takes a toll on relationships, on self-esteem, on people's health, because they internalize all of that. They stew about it. They think about it long after the question's ever been asked to them. And you may not know how that very innocent question is received on the other side. And when it comes to people's fertility and how they choose to use their fertility, that is a really big issue. 
because our reproductive capability is part of how a lot of women measure being female. Because being able to have a baby is one of the most basic things we're quote unquote supposed to be able to do. And yet there are so many of us that struggle with it. So next time you go to a wedding or you talk to newlyweds or you're interacting with a young woman or maybe even one that's built a career for herself, shy away from asking specifically about whether they want kids or not and just ask them about their goals and dreams. If babies are part of their goals and dreams, they'll mention it. It'll be in there. But don't put pressure on and make people who don't want them feel less than. Thank you for joining me for another episode of Reproductive Rebel. Reproductive Rebel is recorded by certified peristeam hydrotherapist and acutonics practitioner, herbalist, and Chinese nutritional therapist, Adrian Irizari of Moon Essence LLC. If you are interested in setting up an appointment for one-on-one support, ordering from our store, or checking out our course offerings, visit our website at moonessence.life. Be sure to subscribe to our newsletter and get insider information on upcoming events and offerings. Join the conversation. Like and follow us at Moon Essence Me on Instagram, Facebook, or LinkedIn. Your voices make this program possible. Thank you all for your continued support.